you looking at? Food out. <laughs> You're looking out the window. You can't kill every squirrel. You can't. <laughs> we have to leave some little animals alone in the world. You can't kill them all. <laughs> <laughs> Hello, Booktube, and welcome back to your Daily Penguin. This is our tour through my Penguin Classic wall, while it still exists. Dun, dun, dun. <laughs> uh, and we have been doing, we've been concentrating on nonfiction for Nonfiction November, a great Booktube event started by Olive at a Book Olive and hosted this year by a bunch of great people who are doing, they're pulling out all the social media stops that the kids do, like TikTok and all that. Uh, to enhance the profile of nonfiction on BookTube, a great bookish community that still concentrates more on the made-up stories than it does on real books. <laughs> uh, I thought to help that, since we're winding down this year of our penguins, that I would concentrate on nonfiction. And uh, our book today is great. It is, in fact, a, an epic of war literature. And there's not much in it that's probably nonfiction, but it, it was certainly written that way. And that is the Shah Nama by Ferdosi. And this is uh, a translation, a fantastic translation by Dick Davis. This is actually a, a greatly enlarged version of uh, of an earlier translation they did of the same work. I remember when this came out, it didn't come out from Penguin first, it came out I think from Viking or somebody first. It was a big hardcover and I remember I was working in a bookstore when it came out and was so happy. <laughs> I was so happy. My bookstore got to copies. I think it was $40, a $40 hardcover. The bookstore got two copies. And that was optimistic. <laughs> that was the only reason that, uh, as the, the guy who was running the receiving department at, at that, it was a Barnes and Noble, the, the, the guy who was running the receiving department uh, took a look at it, heard me squeal. I was in the receiving room when it was unboxed and I squealed. Uh, exactly the kind of squeal that you're all familiar with. And, uh, he looked at it, read the description on the dust jacket, and said, two whole copies, huh? And then he said, that must be because you work here. And he ended up being right. It was optimistic, but it was realistic only because I knew immediately the two customers I could sell those copies to. The two customers who would want them at that price. I knew immediately who they were because when I was working in a bookstore, I sort of I sort of continued the 19th century tradition of the the knowledgeable clerk, the clerk who not only knows the works that are coming in and their relative merits, their you know uh, positive and negative, but who also knows the customers and is going to see something and know right away. Oh, I know this is not a, this is not a random thing. This is for sure. I can sell this copy to this customer, and once I do, we'll have room for another copy that I can sell maybe to a customer that I don't know. Uh, but take care of the sure sales first. Once upon a time, the standard practice in, for instance, 19th century bookstores was to have little boxes or crates or shelves set aside where that's exactly what the staff would do. They would say, oh, well, you know, we got in a couple of new books on the on scientific classification of butterflies. You better put those aside. You know, this aside for, for customer X, this aside for customer Y. And it, you might say, well, then how's the general customer supposed to know what's new? Doesn't that isn't that favoritism? It is favoritism. Yes, it's called capitalism. It's called commerce. If you you set the books aside for the customers you know will buy them, and then when they do, you use that those sales to justify getting more copies of that same book. So you're not out anything. Uh, and I had the ultimate backstop too, which is that I was going to buy a copy. <laughs> so so uh, and uh, I had no idea at the time that Penguin Classic would take it for their line. This is a 10th century epic about the history of Persia, about the, the history of Persia from the earliest, or earliest you know, Livy-style uh, mytho-historical roots all the way up to the uh, the Muslim conquest of the 8th century. So, so uh, all the way up to a, an era where you're not mythologizing anymore, at least where you hope you're not. And it's a combination of prose and verse, and Davis does a great job with both. It's just, uh, this is such a great, weird reading experience. It is, uh, it is very much, if, you, if you're not familiar with this at all, and if you're not familiar with any of the figures or any of the history itself, and if you don't know the original language, as I don't, 
uh, than reading this is like a weird funhouse distortion of the sense of reading Homer or Virgil. There's that same feeling that only epics really have, but it's not like anything else that you've ever read. It's not the, the closest thing we've seen recently here on the March of the Penguins that would come close would be the, the Tales of the Arabian Nights, where it's a big, rolling, fully detailed world of its own that is totally alien to uh, Western roots, most of them. Uh, it's a terrific reading experience. I strongly recommend it. I'm very glad this is in the Penguin line. And uh, we're going to count it as nonfiction <laughs> for today. Uh, certainly, it has been taught that way more often than it has been taught as uh, Homeric quasi-literature or quasi-mythology. Quasi so we'll, we'll count it that way. Historians still mine this work all the time, East and West, for the, the stuff that's in it that is probably verifiable. Uh, but more importantly, the, the thing that's, that floats your Penguin Classic recommend for today is that it's a really interesting read. It's really, once you get used to it, same thing as with, with any big translation of Thousand One Nights, once you get used to it, uh, it's really good. <laughs> so, so there you go. It's the Shah Nama. You never know what you're going to find on this Daily Penguin. So we're going to move on from this. Uh, we'll, we'll, who knows what we'll encounter tomorrow? I'm not looking ahead, but I will, I will, uh, I will look ahead just far enough uh, to make sure that it's nonfiction, and then we shall see. And we will return and find out what that is tomorrow, unless my day is given over to sneezing, in which case there will be no videos. <laughs> and I will be crawl in a, in a fetal position on the floor in absolute agony, spraying blood onto my own knees. But let's hope that doesn't happen. <sighs> anyway, <laughs> that's your Daily Penguin for today. I'm going to wrap this up, uh, but I will be back. Thank you, Booktooth.